let's have a look at the at a few demos for the moment. I need to disconnect and connect stuff, and that's where things get interesting. Live demonstration was changing things live. What could go wrong? Besides my squeaky seat, yes, we're good. So let's see if that's working. Yes, it is. So <clears throat> what you see here is a video generated on the fly on the Raspberry Pi Pico with 640 by 480 and a lot of moving around people. And the Pico has definitely not enough, enough RAM to store that. So every time it needs to put out a new image, it starts on line one and looking up where items should be and putting together pixel by pixel, line by line, and shifting that out a little bit ahead of the required output. And that's coming from that little thing. That's coming from that little thing or, yeah, just a few resistors and an HDMI shape DVI output later. That's, wow. uh, so you can see um, the colleagues from MacPy have a small article on that. I need to see if I can move that. Pulling on cables where you don't know where they when they end is quite so. So you can see it's just a plain pico with the added DVI header producing that image on the fly. Uh, running at 252 megahertz and utilizing uh, for the image output both cores quite quite heavy. Well, that's certainly very impressive as a novelty. But have you seen any uh, practical use for them? Maybe in airport time displays or something because these boards are so cheap. No, I haven't seen them used as as pure graphic outputs for the moment. As as there are. There are ideas to use them as a graphics coprocessor, for example, on a C64, but haven't seen something fully done yet. So that's to be determined. And the other thing I talked about is the uh, Mode 7 graphics. So if we have a look here, you can see this pseudo 3D effect shape. And if you now Imagine this is a racing game. You can see where it goes. And this is just having the Raspberry Pi Pico image as a tile map. And talking of that, let's, let's talk about what are tile maps, tiles, and how the uh, moving people around are at least composed to, to give a rough idea. Um, what you can see is a so-called uh, tile map. So you have these little tiles, 16 by 16 pixel. And you will just tell uh, the uh, software where to put them. So you have a map, a tile map, how they are located. And it's looking like a mosaic on a wall, basically. And if they are all nicely combined together, you have the background. And then you can say, hey, I need, for example, a walking character in the front. And you can have then sprites uh, that have a transparency information to them and then put them for one frame in a certain position. And then after the frame is done, update the sprite position or sprites position so that you get the illusion of, for example, a walking person around. And this is also how the old games on an NES or SNES are done or even other similar systems, the C64 in a not that advanced technical fashion, but also doing the same trickery with sprites. And you can do amazing effects. Do you uh, know if those. the C64 had hardware sprites? Uh, yes, as far as, as far as I understood, yes. Because the something Texas that Instruments had uh, 32 hardware sprites, but single color only. So nothing as pretty as these that you're showing here. I mean, the, the first system that, that used something like sprites was the Atari 2600 player missile or, or pedal ball image. They didn't call it sprite 
bits back in the day, and you had two or two or eight of them with a little bit of trickery. And yeah, it advanced really, really far, at least for the 2D effects. And I think the the latest evolution on sprite engines was the Neo Geo, the arcade machines. Yeah. Well, and Ari has a question in the chat room. He wants to know the obvious. Can it play Doom? I'm thinking no. Uh, the RP2040 can play Doom. It can? It can, yes. I haven't prepared that, to be honest. But it can play and Doom, and it can the play Doom multiplayer. Tile was impressive. Um, yeah. So it can do Doom. Um, also, the MacPy colleagues had an article on that. So there's source code for Doom. Uh, that you can put on the Raspberry Pi Pico. It will overlock this, uh, overclock the system a little bit. And depending on when you bought them and which flash ship iteration you have, it may work or may not work. Do you need the HDMI sock or DVI sock? Sorry. Uh, you need some kind of VGA output. So they are driving VGA, not DVI. Because okay. they well, I've got this just waiting, doing nothing. I'm going to try that then. Um, for the DVI, with the, with the sprite library, it's it's quite easy to, to get started um, for digital video output. For which, as I said, Doom, um, you need all the processing power for even, yeah, to, to get the VGA running. So there's no, no core to spare for the DVI output. That's sadly for that. But you could do a couple, two Raspberry Pi Picos, one just as the graphics engine and one for the rest of the logic. So nobody stops you from doing that. So the demos we saw, we have the walker scene. That's uh, the moving people around. And we have seen also the uh, sort of 3D effect of RP2040. And this has been, I think there's one game out there for the Pimeroni game system based on the RP2040 in the handheld that uses this effect to create a Mario Kart style race game. It's, it's quite nice. Documentation is around links and all the interesting stuff you will find in the current Elector magazine and the main article. And in the upcoming issue will be a second part that goes more with the VGA and DVI stuff. And also all the nice links and trickery involved uh, will be found in those articles. Yeah, and from the time frame, uh, as sorry as I am, but we are coming to an end, sort of. So that was it for this webinar. So more showing the moving pixels that we couldn't do in print. Well, with the mm. current print technology, we can't do moving pixels. And yeah, uh, so if you want to start, I mean, the, the RP2040 is really a nice one to, to go with. And if you like to know more about it, have a look at the Electron Magazine, the current issue and the upcoming. Uh, have a look at Electro Labs for interesting projects around video generation and also other stuff. And if you like to get informed about new webinars, maybe free articles, uh, may register to the uh, eSign, the Electro Newsletter. Uh, 